privilege. We are at the fair uh, area, and you are here. Please uh, introduce yourself and yep. your company yes. to us. Um, uh, I run a company called EcoRights. We are originally a company from Stockholm in Sweden. We've been repre we represent producers, so we uh, manage the rights of producer, television producers internationally. Nationally or which country? In, uh, internationally. So we, if, uh, when we, uh, we, we uh, represent producers and sell their rights all over the world. We started to work with Ayabim and Kerem Shatai and Ekrem Shatai like 10 years ago, I think. And uh, in those days they didn't do so much dramas, it was more entertainment shows. And we worked with them internationally. And then, uh, like I think five years ago, uh, Kerem came to me with his new series SL. And I was uh, maybe not expecting too much because I didn't know anything about Turkish drama. So I, I uh, said I'm gonna watch it and went home and watched it and I just loved it. I thought it was the best I've seen ever. And since then, that was the start of, uh, for SL. We've sold that to uh, over a hundred countries around the world. Hundred? Yes. It's amazing. Which countries, for example, if you... You know, it's the, the wave of Turkish drama has been very interesting because it's conquering country by country, that's what mm -hmm. you say. You know, Middle East was the first mm -hmm. and Balkans, mm -hmm. obviously the old Ottoman Empire countries who yes. share, <laughs> share part of the culture. But then we, we've seen country by country coming. You know, mm -hmm. you saw like in Pakistan, uh, like two years ago, when they, nobody they had sold... They very difficult to enter to Pakistan market. Yes, it is. But Why? The, no, no, it wasn't because, uh, like two years ago, uh, nobody had uh, watched the Turkish drama, and then the first one was on air. And it's normally a few series that are like working very well, mm -hmm. like uh, Thousand and One Nights, SL, a Magnificent Century to some extent. But uh, SL and Thousand and One Nights t seem to be like the forerunners in each country. So in Pakistan, uh, basically, uh, they started to take off, and we were sold out. We sold everything, and we still do. And then we have seen the same development in other countries like Ukraine and Russia was uh, booming as well. And now the last year uh, we've seen in Latin America, which is just amazing. Because we premiered with SL in, uh, in Chile on Mega, the 28th of December. And it goes daily. They start with Fatma Gül Suchine. The first uh, f first hour in prime time, I cut it in 45 minutes. And Your then pronunciation is very well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they say I talk I'm like a Turkish gypsy. Or something. <laughs> so they start with Fatma Gül and then they run a cell on Mega. And a cell is scoring between 26 and 30 percent ratings every night, meaning that one third of everybody who has television, which is everyone in Chile, is watching every episode, which is like a success that you you see that figure so. Eurovision Song Contest, the final in Sweden, perhaps once a year, and uh, the Turkish drama is delivering that every year, uh, every day. So uh, based on that, so that's that's the latest. Latin America is the latest frontier of Turkish drama. Mm -hmm. That we're now selling it to Brazil, to Uruguay, Paraguay, Peru, uh, Mexico, Hispanic US, Venezuela. Uh, you know, all the countries coming. So, but of course we we'll then see that they take the, the best series and we sell lots of others, and then there is normally a bit of saturation when people get a little bit, little bit tired of watching uh, you know, Turkish actors. Uh, I, I would ask that, why they are se uh, buying this series? No, because what I think is like the this. differences? Yeah, because you have, you have different production hubs around the world. You have, of course, Hollywood, and you have Bollywood, you have Korea, and you have uh, Turkey. Then, of course, you have a Latin American telenovelas, which I think is the root where this all came from. Because I believe in the 70s and the 80s, there was lots of telenovelas on air here in Turkey, and people got inspired, and you made your own version, which I think is wonderful. You know, because the global trade of you know, it's media is becoming a global media place very, very quickly, quickly much faster than you, you you would imagine. And then, if it's everybody wants to watch the same thing. And uh, the Americans have had a very strong position the last years, you know, after the Second World War and all that, everybody wants to watch Americans. But they don't work anymore uh, to that extent. Even in like Sweden, Denmark, they are closing their output deals with American studios because their stories doesn't work too, too well. And I think to have to produce something for the Turkish average Turkish citizen is a better benchmark for the world than producing something for the average American, you know. So I think that's, that, that is something that is very interesting because, and then you see, um, but it's also because the American series tend to be very much like cowboy stories in different dressings. It's about the police and the thief and you know, in different versions. The Turkish drama is taking family issues seriously. 
which Americans only do when it's a comedy. They do Modern Family or they do Friends, which is like comedy about family life. The Turks dare to be emotional about uh, family issues. Well, I think is you know it's it's uh, interesting. Then the other factor is pure uh, you know financial, because the Latin American market they do also uh, strong emotional family stories, but they do it at mainly half the budget of a, a, a Turkish series per hour, meaning that the Turkish dramas are actually good, because here you have seven channels running, uh, more or less seven channels more running more or less two dramas per day, per night, meaning that you have whatever, uh, almost 80, 70, 80, 90 episodes, 90 minutes of drama per week, 35 uh, weeks a year. And that is the biggest production hub in the world, I would say, for the home market. And that makes it also, the top of those are then becoming very good. You know, if you have an actor, we've seen examples of many actors who were maybe not very good in the first season, but if you've done a few hundred episodes, you tend to become, you know, uh, really good. And that goes for every part of the production, but it's actually, you know, is quality. It it's, it's about who you produce for. And the middle American is not very representative for the world anymore. It's more interesting to produce for the middle ambitious, middle class Turkish one. And the Americans that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, I really think, different. of course, American series are, you know, it's an amazing production quality, many of them. Sure. But, but I think what is happening now in the world is that and the new big hit can come from anywhere. And America is the... We're also taking up, we're just launching one new from Hungary that is doing very well. And, and uh, you know, shows from Latin America and so. So it's becoming a global world out there and it's quality that counts, not necessarily where it comes from. I see. Those are my questions. Yeah. Uh, would you like to add something more? No, but I think the, the future of Turkish drama is interesting. There are some challenging uh, challenges ahead, I think, because uh, the way you do drama today, that you do like 100 minutes per night, it's a bit unusual in the world. And I would say it's a bit exhausting. Mm -hmm. I think the development will be that you make uh, probably a little bit less number of minutes per week, but also you make it even better. Are complaining about it, yeah. you know. So then, because I, but I think it's because you have a bit of a strange rating system, because it's all about being the number one in each evening, and that comes from the fact that you know in other countries you have a rating per you know per you have a reviewer share of that specific hour. Here it's about becoming the number one in that evening, which makes you and you have some kind of tendency to become more likely to be number one if you run a longer show. So it's like a chicken race; nobody dares to stop. And I think that's one reason. So I think the future of a Turkish drama is to make it a little bit shorter and uh, even better. And we are actually doing that when we are launching in Chile and also in Sweden. We had Son, for example, that worked very well. We cut down the Turkish episode by taking out scenes, working with the scriptwriter to make it 30% shorter. So I think Turkish drama should be 30% shorter, and uh, but still as good. I see. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.